Hey, Tanner, uh, just your thoughts now that you've had uh, some time to look back on the season that was up to the point where the, the break started and, and where you thought the team was at that point and, and just going forward, if there is a season, what you guys might be able to accomplish. Yeah, I think, you know, personally, it was obviously a pretty good season. Um, and then, you know, team-wise, I think um, – we were right there knocking on the door to, to be in the playoffs where, you know, a game or, or whatever was out. And, um, you know, it's kind of the spot you want to be at, you know, this point in the season. And, um, you know, if it's uh, – uh, hi, doodles. Um, but, uh, no, it's uh, – it's it, it's unfortunate what happened. Obviously, you know, we were striving in the right direction and you want to, you know, make the playoffs and um, get to the point to, you know, to compete for the Cup. And certainly it's not um, an ideal situation right now, but one of the positives that many people have talked about is, um, you know, increased family time. Is that something that you're enjoying right now? Yeah, obviously. I think, uh, you know, being on the road for, for half the time during the year and, um, you know, especially with the, the little guy here and he's gotten to the age where um, he's a lot of fun, you know, buzzing around the house and, you know, he brings a, a joy to your your day every day and um you know to see uh to see him grow and not miss out on on anything uh to see him every day is uh, pretty cool and um just to help out and be around is awesome and just one more for me your thoughts on some of the reports we've seen this week about the season maybe resuming in a neutral site like north dakota or somewhere like that what would you think about about that plan if it indeed comes to be yeah, I think everyone wants to kind of, you know, get back and, and not miss out on the chance to, you know, compete, um, you know, in the playoffs and that kind of stuff. But um, at the same time, it's, you know, you got to go about the the safe way about this and, and, you know, the smart way, which makes sense to, you know, not just, you know, personally, but uh, for every team and, um, you know, every team in the standings too. Next question comes from Ian McIntyre. Hey, Tanner, things happen so quickly, you know, from like March 10 to 14, the league went from like 100 to zero uh, in a short period of time. How long did it take you to get your head around what was happening and kind of process everything? I think it all really happened in, you know, maybe the first weekend. I think everything happened so quick after the uh, – the NBA kind of called their shot and um, you know, I remember talking to the guys was like, yeah, worst case scenario, we're going to play without fans. Then all of a sudden um, the NBA goes and then, then we go and it was kind of just a domino effect. But um, then, you know, you thought maybe you could stick around van and, you know, pass the time there. Cause you know, maybe you thought you could start it up the weekend afterwards or something like that. Then, um, then they come on and say, everyone can go home. And that's when it kind of, you know, sunk in that this is a, uh, this is a real deal. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but um, you know, you want to be safe and sorry. You were on obviously um, a Stanley cup team in LA. What was, what was special about this group? Um, I think right from day one, how close we were, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we, we go away every year for camp and, um, you know, it's the little things like going out to dinner right from the get go with the guys on the team. And, um, you know, you're pretty much hanging out with the guys on the team every day for, you know, as long as you can until you go to bed pretty much. And, um, so, uh, you know, right from the start this year, the special group, even if we had like a team gathering and, um, you know, you had the wives there and then the wives were close in a group and just everything that, you know, seemed to had to fall into place, fell into place right from the start. And, uh, Lastly, do you have any close friends or family members who are in the healthcare field? Anybody who's on the front lines in this? Um, no, I know uh, one of my good friends, though. She she works for public health here. Um, not not family, but I got a couple of friends in it. Um, going to the hospitals every day and you know doing their part, which is uh, you know they're all they're all doing well, thankfully, and uh, that's the that's a big thing. Thank you. Uh, ben Kuzma is next up. Uh, Kuz, are you there? 
Yeah, I am. Hey, Tanner. Uh, how you doing? Good, yourself? Good. Uh, when you said you're home, are you back in Kitchener? Yeah. Um, it, it, Ontario has been absolutely devastated by COVID. I'm just wondering how it's hit you on a, on a personal front. Uh, uh, the province is, is going through absolutely a lot of hell with this. How, how aware of it are you? And how much has it affected you maybe on a personal level? Because I'm sure you have a lot of friends and family in the Kitchener area. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, my wife and I kind of, you know, try to keep up with as much as we can with, with uh, watching the news or stuff like that. And, um, you know, like I said before, we got some people that are involved in the healthcare system around here. So we can kind of get a, a good idea of what's going on around town and if we need to. But, you know, we've done a pretty good job of um, not leaving the house. Uh, we've we've been getting a lot of stuff delivered. And, um, you know, when it gets here, wipe it down. And, you know, even our families are, are pretty – serious about it with you know just dropping stuff off the doorstep and you know talking to each other through a car window or, or what it may be but um you know it, it may seem silly to some people but you know at the end of the day we're taking care of you know my son and then you know grandparents and then whatnot and um you know it's scary how easily this can spread and so i think everyone uh you know for the most part is doing a pretty good job around town of it Tanner, yeah, there's a really good story uh, in Kitchener with Bauer Hockey. Now, I understand your father worked for Bauer Hockey? Yeah, he, he still works for Bauer Hockey, yep. Uh, what's his name? Tim Pearson. Tim. And what does Tim do? Great question. Can't answer it. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Uh, let, 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 me, let, me, let me put you this way. There's a great story out there right now about how Bauer has shifted its focus uh, from making hockey equipment to uh, surgical uh, face shield yeah, masks for the yeah. medical, medical community. Uh, how impressed are you by that? And what does it mean to you as a, you know, a guy who grew up there? No, uh, I think it's a huge part, um, you know, and not just what Bauer's doing. You look at a lot of these companies, MLB making masks and gowns out of the jerseys and um, a couple other companies making uh, similar face shields and, um, uh, Under Armour making stuff. It's it's going a long way, and I think everyone's wanted to you know help out, which is the you know a positive thing that's that's going around the community for sure. Were you a Bauer kid growing up? You had the skates and everything. I had everything, head to toe. <laughs> okay. Hey, one last thing for me. Uh, a lot of talk about how the playoffs may form. They may run out of time here. I mean, one one concept is points percentage, which would put you guys in yeah. as an three seed against the number two Oilers. Um, if, if that were to come to fruition, Tanner, I mean, uh, that would be an incredible series. I mean, on a personal level, you had seven points in, in three of those games and including your first four point uh, career outing. Uh, how do you think you would match up if that came to fruition? Because you guys were two, two and zero against them. Uh, you played them tough a lot of nights. You shut down McDavid some nights. How do you think you'd match up? No, I think, you know, like you said, it was the, you know, we went two and two and um, pretty even, you know, ser season series. And, um, you know, I think they they got a, maybe a bit more uh, playoff experience over there or, you know, with the, with the young guys especially. But, you know, they obviously have the two heavy hitters. But at the end of the day, you know, if we do get the call back, yeah, you want to be one of those teams that gets the call that, you know, you're you're – fighting forward and um you know you just got to be one of those teams and then anything can happen after that ian mcintyre has the next question uh hey tanner the the team talked a lot this year about the importance of playing these games that count in in march and april and, and not just trying to make the playoffs but go through what it takes to get to the playoffs yeah now I realize these are all hockey questions in the context of what's going on. That's so much more important, but in terms of that missed month, you know, how much do you think that that hurts the teams, all the young guys that you had who were experiencing mm -hmm. things for the first time and now don't get that opportunity? Yeah. I mean, um, obviously you can ask that question and, and think about it, but then even if I think if the season ends and we just go to playoffs, I don't think that question really matters because you do end up playing uh, meaningful hockey and 
you know, you're competing for the cup, but, um, you know, heaven forbid the season's washed. Yeah. That it, it may be a, a downside to it, but, um, at the end of the day, you're, you're fighting for points every, every game. So, um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's an intriguing question for sure. And have you been in touch much with Tyler and do you think that uh, <laughs> there's anything you can do to encourage him to come back? <laughs> no, I have honestly. I've I've talked to Ty a bit. Um, nothing uh, hockey related. Uh, I know they stayed in Vancouver a bit longer after us, and and then they actually drove to California. So um, no, I haven't talked to him. I think about uh, you know persuading him. I, I think uh, I don't want to talk for him, but I think he likes his time here. All right. Thank you. Trevor Henderson is next from Global. Hey, Tanner, can you maybe just explain to us how difficult it is, I mean, to be at the level of fitness that you're at and, and being you know, hockey-specific, uh, you know, conditioning and all that. Can you just explain to us how tough it is to even come anywhere close to maintaining that? And, and is it uh, – what kind of mental challenge is it for you to, um, you know, do the things that you're doing now and, and just stay in – you know, keep your head in the game, so to speak? Yeah, like you're talking about, like, just staying at home and try to stay in shape. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's – I mean, it's definitely a, a tougher thing, obviously, when you're training throughout the summer and going through your regular, you know, training sessions. You have, you know, gyms that are equipped with everything and, um, and you know, strength coaches that guide you through stuff and stuff like that. And then, you know, this scenario, uh, you know, my house is fairly new, so I don't really have a lot of stuff here. So – you know, the past, you know, week and a half I've been buying stuff. The, the first thing I did when I got home was I bought a Peloton and, um, you know, just anything you can really do to, to stick with it. Um, you know, when I didn't have anything here doing body weight workouts or going for runs and, um, you know, it's weird or cause you know, you can't even get on any ice here, go to a gym, you're, you know, strapping up the rollerblades and going <laughs> for a wheel around town. I guess the thing is, uh, when, when this is finally over and you guys get back, I guess the thing is everybody's in the same boat, right? So everybody's on an equal footing, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, um, you know, even even when it comes to season, you can train as hard as you want throughout the summer, but, you know, you still need that camp week of, you know, hockey conditioning and hitting guys and what's whatnot. So, um, but yeah, like you said, everyone, um, if we do come back, everyone's in the same boat and, um, you know, I assume we'll, uh, we'll get a period of time to kind of, you know, get our legs onto us. Okay. Thank you. Thomas Trance up next. Tanner, we all saw the video of, uh, your son stoning you a few times, um, been working on his skills any as a goaltender? No, no, no. I'm trying <laughs> to make him more of a, a Chris Tanner than a Marky, but, uh, no, it's uh, that, that was a good video. He was he was loving uh, loving a ball being shot at him. That's for sure, which is and, oddly weird. And laughing maniacally too. Uh, yeah, so he was he was going for a good solid for maybe like a minute and a half, two minutes before we actually started doing <laughs> the video. So um, he was having a good day. <laughs> With in addition to sort of spending time as being a father. Um, what sort of media are you consuming? Are there any books, video games, movies, anything you've sort of enjoyed as you've had some time here? Um, no, um, you know, I've kind of kept it kind of, no, no video games in this household. Um, you know, I've kind of tried to put uh, electronics away as much as possible. My wife and I have watched some shows while, while we can when, you know, Tucker's, you know, having naps or put to bed and stuff like that. And, um, you know, we attempted a couple puzzles, never got through them, um, too frustrating. Um, and then actually I just brought up, uh, we, for our wedding, we got this big Scrabble board that, uh, I think we're going to rock tonight. So, um, so it should be, uh, an interesting night. You've been through a lot in your career, obviously the success in LA and, and sort of the disappointment that you had in Pittsburgh in sort of rebounding and having the full season that you did sticking in the top six, being productive throughout, what did that mean to you? I mean, regardless of how this sort of season turns out, when you look back at what this campaign meant for your career, how do you think you'll remember it? 
No, I think um, it was, um, you know, I think I learned, especially over the last year of, you know, not to get too frustrated. I think that was the, probably the biggest, you know, part of my career, I think, so far learning-wise, um, you know, when things aren't going your way to kind of try to stick with it or, you know, even work harder to, you know, get something back or get something to go your way. And um, like even at the beginning of the season that, you know, pucks weren't going in for me, but um, still just, you know, doing the little things during practice, you know, not getting too frustrated about it. And when I think when you do that, things are bound to go your way. And then, um, you know, just started not looking at the big picture, just focusing on my game and game in and game out. And, you know, stuff was just, you know, go my way after that. Thanks, man. David Quadrelli is next. Hey, Tyler. So how important was it for you to reach the 20 goal mark this year and kind of have that bounce back year? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, I've always believed that in myself that um, I can score 20 goals in this league after, you know, especially I did it, you know, however many years ago. But, um, you know, especially after how last year shaped up or last year ended anyway with – with the Canucks and, you know, that hot streak, it gave me a, a boost of confidence and um, definitely, you know, proved myself what, what I can do if I, uh, you know, really, you know, buckle down and have fun with the game and, you know, just focus on the little things. Thank you. So at this point, I don't have any further questions from the group. Oh, hang on. Got one from Jackie Spiegel here. Jackie, bear with me and I'll uh, unmute your line. Thanks. Um, hi, Tanner. Uh, hi. You've played for Canada for World Juniors mm -hmm. and been in that kind of environment where it's an insulated one. I was just wondering what your thoughts were, were in regards to kind of having that. Um, oh, sorry, hold on. Yes, for that. Uh, to having that kind of insulated experience possibly with the regular season and playoffs if they happen? Yeah, uh, it would definitely be a different way of going about it. I think um, it's easier to tell a lot of, or easier to tell, you know, 18 year olds to kind of stay in your quarters and then do your own thing and, um, rather than, you know, a bunch of 25 and 30 year olds, adults. But um, at the same time, you, you kind of go through it during playoffs, probably not to the, you know, extent the period of timer or, or whatever you want to say but you know when you go to a city and playoffs and you're there for a couple of days and you know you get a team suite you get you know a hangout area and you're pretty much around the guys so it, you do it already it's just it'd be a longer period of time and you've played in Manchester and I know that was potentially talked about as being a location for this you know insulated area just your thoughts on playing uh you know, NHL games in Manchester and your experience being there. Yeah, no, Manchester, Vegas. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's definitely a nice facility. Um, you know, it's a big one. Uh, it definitely bring back a lot of, you know, memories, but, um, you know, it's, I, I, you know, it'd be a good spot. It would definitely uh, be a different, you know, structure to things. That's for sure. And you're in August birthday. So just, the thought of playing NHL games during your birthday, which is obviously not, <laughs> not yeah, seriously. you know, even if you would have told me, you know, five years ago to think about playing, you know, an NHL game on my birthday, I probably would have told you you're crazy, but um, you know, right now crazier things are happening. So it's, uh, I don't know if who would be more upset because that's my wedding anniversary too. So it's uh, that's a testy one. <laughs> Thank you.